Hello, and welcome to the morning meeting. My name is Jimmy, and sitting next to me is Matthew, and we are going to talk about John Boy Media and answer your questions. And yes, we're in the gaming room today, the other set. Sometimes when we're in the set, you guys have really enjoyed it. So welcome to the new uh, set you've already seen. If you enjoy this channel and you're excited for the new things we're going to be trying that are a little different, you can subscribe. That helps us a whole bunch. On the agenda today, as I pull it up, we obviously have questions from you guys who asked questions last episode on the YouTube, and we will answer them. We also have some meetings to recap, some kickoff meetings we had, start of the year, um, Delhi counter pull tab, Boone event is happening, and I think that's it, right, Matty? Yeah, that looks good. Okay. And shout out to Rob. Shout out, Rob. Who edits these, puts them together. How are you? I'm good. A little bit of an interesting morning um, before and after I got here, but all good. What all happened around. before? It was just an interesting walk to the station. Nothing of note, but out of the norm a bit, but all good. Okay. I am excited for today because... Um, there's a few fun meetings towards the later afternoon. Get to look at the website. Oh, that's exciting. We get to do our creator meeting for those that applied. Mm -hmm. And then we have the leaders meeting today rather than yesterday. Oh, yeah. So there's, there's some good meetings at the end of the day. That's interesting because we're filming JJTV for a full block and I mm. indulge during those. And then the leaders. So like to put all those meetings after that. I can't change my schedule. You know, Wednesday is my fun day. Monday and Tuesday. Mon Tuesday night feels like the weekend every time for me because my Monday and Tuesdays are so crazy. Did you see what Lucas built for me? Rhetorical question. You probably haven't seen it. It's uh, an easier well, way to track all the shows, or did you help build this? I did not help build it. So now you killed my vibe, but I was going to say, oh, ho, ho, I've seen it. But then you said, did you build this? Oh, yeah. So no. Well... Some people get really upset with me because I start conversations with questions that like, and I, my dad does this and we used to get annoyed with my dad because like, you know, did you see what Lucas built me is me just starting a conversation like, right, Hey, want right. to see what Lucas built me, but I do it in that way. Cause my dad did it in that way. And my sisters and my wife are always like, why would I've seen it? Mm. And I'm like, Oh my God, I'm just entering the, sorry, my bad. Anyway, it's cool. It has a toggle here where I can choose the show. Or maybe I can't do that because I'm view only. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have to change that. And then I can toggle the show and it's just an easy way for me to see how everything's going. Yep. So like I have talking Yanks in front of me and I have a graph of the yearly average 2021, 2022, 2023. That's funny. It looks like a joke graph. J Jake and I always used to laugh because the early stages of the company and sometimes still our graphs mm. just look like make a fake graph.com yeah. where the line just keeps going up. I'll show this one because it's pretty cool. Oh, they won't be able to see it. They can Coming. see the bar. You think so? Yeah. Just up. Just how you would make a joke graph. Yeah. Up. No, oh, up. Yeah. Like for the, the emoji. For the, for the, yeah, basically the emoji. So this is cool. And then what else does he have on here? Quarterly averages for the year. That's always cool. Um, be good to see trends that don't align with the season, but talking Yanks will, uh, for other shows. And then what's this monthly averages and a year over year bar graph for that. Well, that's cool. 2023 August for talking Yanks was incredible when they were like officially fucking bad. Those were the back to back boon apps trade deadline. And yeah. then. What yeah, the hell? but even our episodes like in between were like did yeah. really well. Yeah, yeah. And then we didn't even release any in October, so we had the worst October in Talking Yanks mm -hmm. uh, in the last three years. That makes sense. It makes a lot. We didn't do any. Didn't do an episode. We did like two episodes, three yeah. episodes, maybe instead of the Standard usually we do daily. Daily. Yeah. Uh, and now after like we went to the postseason, like December, the end of the year. We had our best November for Talking Yanks in the last three years, and best De December shot back up. What's 2023 yellow? Yeah, to basically where August was. Holy shit. I didn't realize December got that good. That's got to be Soto. 
Soto. Yeah. Well, okay, that's cool. And I, Yamamoto. I gotta uh, let Lucas know that I need. Uh, I can't toggle it in view only. So that's gonna be a really fun way to easier way for me to check in on how everything's doing. Yeah, he showed that to me yesterday. I was very excited, and I hope that that came across to him in the meeting yesterday. Maybe it did. Um, speaking of talking Yanks, big announcement went out on Monday that there's a talking Yanks live with Aaron Boone. Yes. Excited for that. I am. Uh, I actually, I haven't like fully wrapped my head around it, uh, and started planning it yet. It's at the end of the month. So I will, it's January 29th, downtown social, downtown. That gets stuck in my head every time. Macklemore? That's Macklemore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was at this day drinking festival with uh, my friends in Livermore and one of our friends dad is a character um, actually it was like a fringe friend like but her dad big character and I think Jake might have been there and it was a wine festival so everyone was pretty day drunk and uh, we were like let's go downtown after this and then for like five minutes straight her dad was just going downtown and then dancing and then going up to everyone and then pointing at him and then you had to say it Right. And then he would say it, and then yeah. you would say it. And that, kind of like a core memory, I guess. What are they calling those? Core memories? Yeah, core memories. Uh, so when I hear the word downtown, I I don't think Macklemore. I think that dude. Yeah. That's funny, though, because I woke up today with Macklemore's wings stuck in my head. Mm. And then listened to that um, I don't on know. the whole train there. I don't know. That's all. Here. I only know the one. I guess I know downtown, the one word. And then the one Jake sings all the time. Thrift shop? Yeah. Wait, is that thrift shop when he's like, what's the ice, ice cube worth? Jake yeah. does that part all the time. Don't charge me for that. Yeah. Or double charge me for that. That's so. not the same song. What's that song? Um, That's a newer song. Well, that's what. Don't double charge me for that. That's by Little Dicky. Oh, and it's, is that not the one Jake sings? That's what Jake sings. It's not Macklemore. Oh, though. okay. Well, it, then, my bad. That song is called... Yeah, so one where Lil Dicky did the music video where he went to all the famous yeah. houses. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Talking Yanks Live with Aaron Boone. Save that money. Save that money, yeah. Uh, tickets are still available. I think the one, the um, the VIP Silver sold out. Damn. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's interesting because we haven't done events. You know, we didn't do playoff events, so... Um, I'm trying to see where did Courtney send that in the leadership slack where she uh, was? no events. So this was as of yesterday early. VIP silver had already sold a bunch, then VIP gold, then general admission was the least of the tiers sold. Oh, so this total number we might be up to like a hundred people now. I mean at some that point. Yeah, definitely. Cool. Yeah. Um I'm excited. I don't know what that. I, I, we're gonna like talk to Boone. I wanted to make some fun games or fun stuff, but there's obviously just like questions we gotta have, and then there's gonna be meet and greets opportunities. There's still tickets on sale. It's gonna be a Monday night, so especially if you work in Manhattan, and instead of going home, you wanna just head to downtown Social in the East Village. Head on over. You can go get tickets at shop.johnboymedia.com. And shout out to Frank Luna and Collectible Exchange for putting this together. Frank's been a big time listener to Talking Yanks. Famously called in a voicemail episode to, just to shout out his dude, uh, Elijah Dunham. <laughs> and then he has a connection with a lot of the minor leaguers and yeah. does this stuff to get them some extra money. And uh, like that's how uh, Oswaldo Cabrera came. And uh, we've been connected with Steiner a couple times. So. Thanks to Frank and Collectible Exchange. Oh, I have to do an ad read for this? We somewhat did. I, doors open at 6.30. Talking okay. Yanks will start at 7. So there's a limited amount of tickets like we kind of alluded to. So go to the link in the description now. We will. I'll be there. Jimmy will be there. We'll all see you at Downtown Social. Yeah. Um, Julia Bloom, who, yeah. I mean, she comes to almost all of these events. Shout out Julia and her husband. And her husband. Who is not a big fan, but he comes. He comes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he's always like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Do you have I fun? take the picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, he's, um, he's awesome too. Yeah. But she s- said, can you talk about the event? Tell us the background details of setting that up, which you somewhat started to do with mentioning Frank. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm a little, uh, events is one of the areas that like, I kind of just like check in at a higher level. Actually, 
there was a first iteration of this that I vetoed because um, it didn't make sense for us. And then we came back and found a better way to do it. So I'm really excited about that. I wanted to do nighttime in the city because I thought people would be able to come and it's easier for mine and Jake's lives. So, and then Boone, I'm not sure if, like, I think they got Boone and then instead of us getting Boone. Yeah, Frank Luna kind of came to us and said, said do you want to do this? Do you want to do this with Boone? Yeah. Yeah, so I don't, I don't, that's as much as I can offer. And then I wanted, I see the setup, like I thought it'd be fun if we have like a projector and we show some like clips and talk to Boone and get his reaction to some things. Uh, or it just might be like, you know, straight podcast, ask some questions from the crowd, hang out. Should be a good time. Yeah. I agree. Boone's probably never seen like, ah, he's seen Yankee fans. It'd be fun to introduce him to like, you know, kind of out crew that always comes to these events and stuff. Yeah, I guess I'm curious. People like us too, huh? Huh, Boone? That's what they'll say. Who here came to see Boone? No yeah. one. Who here came to see me and Jake? Yeah. Ah. All right, Boone, leave. Yeah. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, do you think he'll notice a difference of like I mean he's surrounded by Yankee fans no, all the time he's had fans his whole life his yeah. dad his grandpa so I don't think he I think he knows he's pretty cool cat as he's they so say. cool yeah yeah um, this weekend snow day yeah James enjoy it uh, yeah he really did our snowman's officially done it's just a hat on the grass now after all the rain last night we got enough snow to build a snowman. It said it was going to snow for a couple hours and then rain, so I thought it was all going to go away. So we were out there when it was coming down, and then it was sticking, and then that rain turned into snow, so we got like three inches. I mean, it was not a ton. I did shovel, like, I had shoveled the sidewalk and the neighbors and my neighbors and, like, the whole pathway. So it was enough to have to shovel, I was, and it was really pretty. It was coming down so thick on Saturday or, or Sunday. And then James had a blast. He likes throwing stuff. So, I mean, once Snowball. like snowballs came into play and then he, he's kind of tough because he enjoys um, rough play a little bit. Like he kept saying like, throw it at me, dada, throw me, throw me, dada. And he wanted me to hit him with a snowball. Um, and then he would throw him back. And then our neighbor came over who's, who's around his age, but a little younger. Mm. And other kids don't enjoy getting hit like James does, and he, he uh, tried to have a snowball fight with him, hit him right in the face. And it was like, come on. He did feel bad. He went and gave him a hug and said sorry. But it's a tough thing because, like, I like playing with him, and I like that he likes playing with me like that. But it's hard to draw the line of, like, you know, I was trying to say, only if someone is playing with you can you throw it at them. He wasn't playing. But, he, I mean, he was, like, maybe 20 feet away, 15, yeah, 20 feet away, 15 feet away. Pinned him right in the face? Or in the mouth. Luckily, the kid had a pacifier in. So kind of the sting of the the eyes. Yeah. He's got a crazy arm. Did you see the golf swing last night? Yeah. He's nuts. Yeah. He just swings so hard. He's also not hitting that with an easy part of the club. No, I drew an X on the putter to try and show him, like, hit the ball here. But he he doesn't care. And he's just trying to hit it so hard now. That's all he says. Me hard, hard, hard. (laughs) Like, look at that swing. It looks like I sped up this first swing. I did not. And then look how much he gets into his legs. Yeah. It's crazy. And he says. Oh, honey, be hard. Yay. Oh, me, me hard. Yay. <laughs> me hit hard. That's funny. Maybe I'll send that to Rob if he wants to put it in. He, uh. He came to the warehouse last week. He was yeah. a little in his shell. He's very well. He napped on the way, and then mm-hmm. he, I think he, I think mostly it was nap, and then there's a lot of people there. He saw you and liked you, and he likes Jack and Zoe because he watches them. Yeah. I think I'm gonna like firmly. He recognizes them. Yeah, he wants to play with them. He's hard to play with because he's very demanding. He's like, you pitch, I hit, we run. He he knows what he wants, but he can't talk yet that much. So yeah, when when he was playing with me. First of all, it was exciting that I don't know if he recognized me or not, but he seemed to when you were holding him like I think he did. But it is funny that we would like take one ball from the supply closet, walk out to the warehouse, throw it, and then say, Nah, done with that ball. Like yeah. let's go get another one. Yeah, he knows what he wants. But I think he had fun. He always like he knows when I'm dressed for the warehouse. 
what uh you know he goes dad dad ball mm. and and then he really didn't want to go back to school because he had been with his uh grandparents and holidays so he cried so katie said if you like if we go to school i'll bring you to uh play ball with daddy afterwards and i was like oh shit really are you just lying to him because i'm excited and then she wasn't lying and you said that he calls blitz balls dad at balls dad at balls yeah That's which funny. he knows he's not allowed to play with because they're really hard uh-huh. so sometimes i'll come home there's one in the basement on my bookshelf that's like the only one in the house we have and i came home one day and he grabbed my hand and walked me down to the basement and then pointed and then got a step stool. And then I was like, you, Oh, like how long have you been thinking about this? Yeah. That's so. funny. Um, switching topics a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean a lot of bit. You had a field day on Twitter yesterday. Oh yeah. How did that feel? I mean, it felt like old school. Yeah. Yankees. I know. I like live covering stuff like that and like making gifts and, and things. And I had, uh, I got a ton done on Monday. I got a breakdown done. I think I have to do another one this week, but I also got five shorts and I edited a six that I have to record. So I felt kind of good about that Mm -hmm. and, um, trying to be more active on social media this year, a little bit in different ways. So, and there's really nothing in the pipeline for breakdowns right now. Like nothing has happened that I'm like, oh, I want to do that. And with NFL playoffs coming up, I think there will be moments there that will be fun. So I didn't stress yesterday morning about um, – I wasn't didn't feel under the gun about getting my own content done. So I was like, oh, I'll just uh, live tweet some shit no one wants. And the, that makes me happy knowing that people are like, why are you doing this? Mm. And then there was people that were very excited. So I wish I would have – could have done it today because today I could have went three sports in a row. There's uh I could have done the end of the um, big bash league, Australian cricket league, which was a better match today. It was awesome. And then I could have done Kabaddi. There's two matches today, which is Kabaddi is Indian sport. That's very unique. I mean, I compared it to like tag uh, and capture the flag. I think, Americans can like that makes uh, you run into the other team's side, small, small square of like a wrestling mat, and you run into the other team team side, and you have thirty seconds to uh, touch one of them and then run back. And if you touch them and run back, your team gets a point, and they lose the player that got touched is out, like dodgeball. Uh, but if you don't get back, so as soon as you touch them, the whole team tries to tackle you. And if they oh. tackle you and you never make it back to your side, uh, then you're out. Yeah. And they get, and they get a point. And then there's other points like a super tackle uh, would be like uh, if there's um, only like three people left on the defending side and they get you down. I don't know if the number's three. I forget. How many do you start with? Maybe eight. Eight? Yeah, eight or maybe people six. trying to tackle one person, and the guy makes it back sometimes? Yes, because you have to think that um, they don't want to get touched because they're trying. Oh, I see. Yeah. I think it's too much to go into the actual like detail of it, but it's really cool because, okay, how many people are on the yellow side? So wait, wait, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I wonder if I could show this or not. I don't know if Rob can like zoom in on the screen. I'll try to show you. Do you think they can see that? I don't know. It looks like it's. All right. Want to see what I find cool about this? See how the yellow team is all holding hands? Yeah. It's because they have to move as a unit, like gears. You see how the blue guy right. now goes to that side and they totally. I'll back s- up. And that side backs up and this side comes out because now if he touches one of them, they, they have, have to, to fucking tackle. close the gap and yeah. tackle him. And on the in and each, um, like this dude right here mm-hmm. is probably their best raider at like going and touching. That was my next question. So he's probably being protected by right. one of the best defenders. Yeah. That was my question is do people get protected? Yes. Because each team has like a good raider. Um, and also if he touches his foot behind this black line, that's a point automatically. So he got some dude. It's so unique. 
Like, I don't really know any other sport, and I love the the, the teamwork is kind of crazy. I think they pounce on this dude. This is their, one of the best players. <laughs> yeah, watch this, watch this. His time was running out. He kind of did some. Time was running out, dumb. and it was a do-or-die raid, meaning the last two – they bowed out. They, like, tried for 30 seconds. Nothing happened. They're like, never mind. Give up. So on the third one, it's like, hey, something's got to happen here. Anyway, yeah, that's Kabaddi. I mean, probably too bizarre for most uh, American sports fans who enjoy uttering the phrase, I'll never understand this. Oh, well, a billion of people understand it easily. It's not a foreign language. Also, older country. Look at that. I got him. Sometimes they, like, fake the hand and then t touch him with their foot and step on their foot and leave. It's cool. Uh, this, the origin of Kabaddi was, so they get they have 30 seconds on the clock or 20 seconds to rate. I think 30, maybe 20. Um, but originally, because this was, like, a schoolyard game that mm -hmm. wasn't played, like, yeah. with anything, you had one breath to raid. And the way you proved that you weren't breathing was the entire time you were going to the other side to touch a player, you were yelling, Kabaddi, 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 Kabaddi. And then when you ran out of breath, you were done. That's innovative. No clocks. Yeah, no, it is very innovative. That was something. Yeah. I felt like that was that, what's the name of that person you say and you turn around in the mirror? Red Rum. No, that's, Voldemort. No. I don't know. Bloody Mary. Yes. That's what that felt like. No, no, no. Beetlejuice. You're thinking, Beetle, don't say Beetlejuice name three times, and he will appear. Yeah, but the Bloody Mary one oh, is okay. in a mirror. Well, anyway, all these Indian sports are on at 9 a.m., or they start at like 6 a.m. on the weekends because they have a day game. And for two years with kids... I've been waking up early. So like Saturday mornings, I'll do the morning shift, let Katie sleep in. And if James isn't like crying to put on a show, I'll just put whatever sport is on. And I end up watching these sports. And then this one was so intriguing because like, wait, what is this? Right. And unlike most Americans, I very much enjoy, oh, a new sport. How does this one work? Mm. And I like that. So. Cool. Um, did you get more followers from the Twitter like, did you notice that? I might have lost. I, I might have lost. Some people really don't like when you match tweet like that. They're like, oh. Um, I don't know how you would find it. Because I don't know, like, my number. You would, What's that website? Social, Social Blade? Blade. Is that accurate for Twitter? Don't know. Enter username. Twitter. Jumboy. Uh... Uh, 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 let's see, let's see, let's see. Yesterday it says I... Oh, was yesterday Tuesday? Yeah. I gained... No. Wow. I gained 227 new followers. But today, I have lost 257. <laughs> What? I mean, that's everybody from yesterday saw that this isn't daily. Whew. Gone. Um, that's so weird. So I'm down since Monday. I'm up from last Saturday, if you want to do like weekly. <laughs> I mean, we're also talking minuscule amount of people. That's funny, though. Wow. On 12.30 and 12.31, I gained, those two days combined, I gained 4,000. Oh, that had to be the cricket one that went off. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Now I got to tweet about cricket more. Otherwise, I lose them. Kabaddi. I don't know what happened. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, you said, no, I'm not posting the Kabaddi. And then Today, this morning? 250 people. Damn, man. There was another website that I used to f track Twitter, but I think I had to cancel it because it was like way too much money. 
but I'll see if I have it. And it was more accurate. Anyway. Anyway. Fun day on Twitter. I do like doing that stuff. Nice. I don't have to do it that much anymore because we have a whole social team that does a lot of it, like like coverage and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was fun to do. Cool. The next thing that was on the agenda was that we posted a position for a content creator to apply, which is exciting. Yeah, that is exciting. So you want to know how many people applied? I would guess that 500 people submitted to the Google sheet. No, I know it's higher than that. It's higher. So, and they're not really applica- like for, for real applications, but... Um, okay. I would guess 750 people submitted to the Google sheet to apply 692. And I would guess out of those 692, there are five to 10 people we're interested in. I would agree with that. Is that what you would say? Yeah. And, uh, and interested is strong. How many, what percent is that? 10 out of point one. Yeah. And if that sounds like harsh to anyone, One. A, a lot of the applications are people like, I don't, I don't do anything, but I do it with you. And, and we're looking for people who have like an established history of, of understanding what goes into making content of being hungry to mm-hmm. grow it, of doing their own thing of, you know, having a following on, on social accounts and already like knee deep in the game. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, exactly. Or, um, fully in the game chest deep yeah but understand that that by joining a company they get the security of like salary and editors and graphics team and a team of creators to like do new shit uh, off of or or jump into kind of like jam baseball jam warehouse help the company build stuff that's what we're looking for people that have their own thing but then totally mix in with what we're doing and want to be part of our other um facets and can uh, commute and live in the city and uh, work out of the office, which is tough to find uh, for sure. But that's it. But like, yeah, I got also not like entirely looking for people in the baseball world or really not looking for the people in the baseball world. You would have to wow us or have some different niche entry into that. Um, and then, like, I don't want to out this dude by name, but don't DM me and uh, say stuff like, if you're serious about hiring more content creators, we should talk uh, because I didn't respond or something. This guy says, 1.2 million views in three days on this video. If you're serious about it, you should talk. It's like, well, we are serious about it, but that's not really the stats we're looking for. Yeah. Or just don't reach out to me personally on Instagram DM when my, my thing says I don't check DMs. It's a real big way to sour me on you. Yeah. I mean, you were saying it. There's so much in this application thing is just a... Can you send me the results or share the results with me right now? Yeah. Uh, you're on it. Go to Google Drive and type in... John Boy Media Content Creator 2024. John Boy, oh, it's Google Sheet. Yeah. Yeah, adding is is it's tough to do. Yeah, it's tough. But like you were saying, there's so many in here where the answer starts with "I would," or yeah, they're not doing anything yet. Yes. Or um, the other thing is like um, some people are like, "I'll do whatever you want me to do." It's like, oh. The last thing we want to do is create, create, come up with ideas and you just implement them. Yes. Like that's, that's not like you have to be coming up with ideas. That's just more work for us to have to come up with stuff. That's general application advice is don't say, oh, I'll just do whatever you need me or want me to do. I guess. Yeah. For any job in any region, if you're applying anywhere, you're young that you may think that sounds good. I'll do anything you want. Cause like when you uh, try out for a baseball team and they say, what position you say, I'll play wherever you need me. That's a great answer. But when you're applying for a job and they say, you know, what, what could you do for us? I could do anything you want is probably the worst answer because what they want to hear is I can do X, X and X, and that's going to help 
X, X, and X. I could do this first and that will build me up ready to do this. And then I could team up with them and we can do this and have like a full a plan. Yeah. You know, the one person who we're deep in talks with sent over that. Like it was like almost, you know, cause an adult who's done this before and, you know, um, head on their shoulders, but, and we'll announce when we can announce, but it was like, yeah, I was blown away. It was like, this is exactly what we would ask someone to submit after a couple rounds of like how, you know, so how would you, how would, how would this work out? What would it be like? It was perfect. Um, but yeah, I, that goes for any job anywhere. Don't ever say I can do anything you need. It's a, it's a really bad answer. Did you find the sheet? I'm trying. Want me to send you the link? Maybe that's uh, it's oh, smart. Oh, hold on. Me. I'm in my wrong browser. That's why. All right. I will also Slack you the direct link. Well, I was. I have two different Chromes for two different emails. And I was there, but oh, not owned by me. What's it called? John Boy Media Content Creator 2024 responses. You know who loves this shit, Sam. That night that we put this out, she texted me like, have you read them yet? Like, this one and this one is good. She loves reading even the bad ones. I enjoyed it too. I went then after she said, and I went and like read them, and it was fun. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that just do it to talk shit too. Yes. <laughs> I saw some people, and this is when we say like, don't be an internet person. I saw some people trying to rip on the fact that we were using a Google form. And they were like, Google Twitter. form, are you serious? I'm like, what? It's so, e it's so easy. What's the difference? It's easy for you. It's easy for us. I don't understand. Um, and I, uh, yeah, that, it really confused me because I was like totally twisted. Like, what? Um, so 180 people said no, they wouldn't be able to live in New York. So that's easy. We should just delete those. I mean, that's how you have to do this when you're 600. Right? Oh, you sorted it that way, I see. Yeah, I would just delete those off the sheet. Well, yeah, those are... I mean, I'm not reading those. Yes, 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 but then... Yeah. And then what would be the next one? Provide links to your socials, and then I would sort that by everyone that says, like, don't have one. <laughs> the way that I... This wasn't a real look-through, but... Um, one way that I found it was helpful just to get a gauge of who like actually has a an existing audience was I just searched for youtube.com to see a link and then click those links. And when I did that, there was like 500 applicants and 32 of them provided YouTube links. Yeah. Well, that's, th that's a good way to sort it, but also you don't have to do, YouTube no, yet. you don't, you know, like, cause exactly. I think that's how, that's actually, you know, if you have other social medias. Yeah, exactly. Um, so it wasn't like a real thing, but it was like some kind of gauge. Mm -hmm. How did you become a viewer of John content media? A lot of people just said Twitter. Wow. All right. So you have a list of people that you want to continue to talk to? A rough list. I'm going to do a deeper dive now that the applications have slowed. I did the initial list like a day after, and there's been a lot more that have come in. Oh, okay. But, yeah, for our meeting today, I'll have a little bit more written out so that we can go through. Cool. We have budget to hire one or two depending on uh, their starting points. Yeah. I'm looking to add – and again, yeah, we already have one d that we're um, pretty deep into talks with. So the next two would probably be um, like they can enjoy baseball, but that's not their they would their expectations would not be to create baseball content. It would yeah. be to help us go into an, a new arena. Yep. Yeah. All right. All right. I'm glad I didn't have to go through all those. And I'm glad Sam enjoys doing it. So we have a meeting today about that. Yeah. All right, nice. All right. Uh, a few more bullet points. Actually, let's do some questions first. Nice. Why not? Questions. I'm going to sit up in my seat. Respect the audience. Right, right, right. You know? 
be proper about it. All right. Here's a one that I thought you would enjoy because we've done this before. Uh, Britt W., who has uh, been an active listener and, and commenter on this show. I'm uh, just going to listen. I'm not even going to read. She said, I feel like it's been mentioned a couple of times that y'all have a pretty decent viewership on the West Coast. Is that true, and is it large enough to be something that you take into account when scheduling premieres? I brought this question up, though, because I thought it would be cool to share Fuck. the cities, right? We've done the what cities are most active yeah. in our community. I said fuck for those listening because I tried to put my laptop down and just do yeah. it top of my head. And then the first question was something that, like, we can just go look at the stats. Yeah. And she's talking about premieres, and that would mean warehouse. Yeah. That's the only thing we really premiere stuff on. Yeah. So if we want to go look at the audience over there, have you looked at this? I'm clicking on it right now. No. Audience, let's do last 90 days. That's the most you can do that tracks all this usually. Um, top geographies. United States, Canada. Wait, how do I do it by cities? Oh, oh cities. Okay. Last 90 days, which isn't, can we do longer than that for this stat? I don't know. Yeah, you can. Whoa. Okay. The warehouse games, top cities. Okay. Number two is crazy. Do you know what number two is? No, I haven't looked. Number one is New York. First time I've ever seen this city on a top cities chart ever. Okay. Malaysia. No. New York is number one. 1.4% 1. of the views. I don't know what that means. 1.4%? Yeah, total views. New York is 1.4% of them. Oh, okay. That's really low, I I guess, in my head. I mean, it's cities. There's going to be thousands of cities. Okay. So, like, 1.4% is probably pretty big. Okay. What's the next percent? 1.1. 1. 1. Oh, okay. There's four that are 1%. Okay. Uh, you would guess four out of the top five easily. Want to rip those off? Philly. No. Why? Because that's never on here. It's the, just the top four cities in the U.S. L.A. Yes, that's Chicago. number. That's number three. Chicago's number four. The next biggest city. Seattle. Houston. That was what I was going to say, but I didn't know. Yeah, those four are always our audience matches the biggest cities. Yeah. Uh, London number two. I didn't expect that. I never seen that. That's cool, though. And then Dallas, because Texas. Yeah. Uh, then Sydney, Australia. Then Melbourne, Australia. Big cities, I guess. Then Atlanta. Then Toronto. Then Seattle. Then Philly. Then Denver. Then San Diego. Then Brisbane. Phoenix. Mm. Jakarta. Indonesia. Hell yeah, Jakarta. Well, that's cool. But if you do it by country, 60% U.S. Yeah. 6.1 U.K. I feel like that that's recent. I feel like uh, Canada was number two when I did the video recapping the whole year. Right? I don't remember. I don't remember either. Anyway. All right. Well, I was also, I mean, I, I put this in here with the thought of when we did that, like for merch, we went through what cities, what fan bases were like most active. Yeah, yeah. That's Perch. why I guess Seattle, because that was like up there, right? Well, Seattle for talking baseball and talking Yanks and like our merch store for being not a top four, we had a big market. But I, I also might correlate with like Seattle had a little bit where they were opening their window. They were getting Castillo. They had J Rod, the home run, der the home run derby, like. Um, so it might be more just teams on the up because now I wonder if Seattle fans are like, what the fuck, and they leave, or are we going to stay strong in Seattle? Gotcha. Yeah. The Northeast, we actually don't do great in because above New New York is Boston area. Yeah. New England. Uh, so, like, regionally, I think California was the biggest region on the map at one time. But it, there's so much different data you can look at. Okay. Um, a fun question here from uh, Alfie Ramirez. Alfie. We were talking about playing games on Jam Entertainment. I just thought you would enjoy this because I know that you enjoy the game. They said, play Monopoly Deal. Mm. It's much faster than the normal and very fun. 15 minutes and it can flip suddenly. Yeah, I, I don't. Uh, fast games don't work. 
you need slow yeah. games that you can like to pause and talk about and all that. Uh, Monopoly deal is really fun. I enjoy it a ton, but I don't, I, you wouldn't be able to like, uh, share your strategy because the other people would hear it mm. or like, what are you doing? I don't know how you would present that in an interesting way. Yeah. The audience needs to ha to know something other people don't, uh, in poker, they know the cards, but at poker would like the next step would be like to like have, uh, players in separate rooms playing yeah. poker and explaining like, Oh, I'm bluffing him right now. I think he'll do that. That would be way more interesting to me. Yeah, that would be. And that's what I would want to do. Yeah. So, um, you know what I would think would be interesting to try with that ideology is clue. Like we could have it so that, you know, what cards everybody's holding and you know, we could do like confessionals, but, yeah. Um, all right. Toronto's number four city for the main channel. Okay. And then... Then Houston. Yep. Then Seattle, then Dallas, and San Diego, and the Philippines. So the warehouse getting London's kind of wild. Yeah. Um, cricket? Like, is it that strong of a pull? I don't know. It could just been, like, shorts. Like, I think you can do it by shorts and by long form and you can change it and i wonder if that uh well i don't know why that would matter but yeah okay interesting question that sent me down a deep dive speaking of the warehouse tomorrow january 11th schedule release announcement video i wanted to schedule a tweet today as like a reminder with a still frame from the video i'll to try and do that live update by the way 101 tickets sold to the Boone event. Nice. Thank you, everyone that's purchased and coming. Excited to see you and say hi and make Boone rate your outfit. Imagine we told Boone that. Yeah. You wouldn't like it. I've had this gag in my head for a little bit that's, like, not funny, but I think it's funny, of just uh, introducing Jake and just uh, – just doing like a, almost like uh, whose line is anyway like oh and now Jake Storielli will be doing his first ever rendition of his new song dumb when I want to be and seeing what Jake does yeah by like a radio voice I don't think it would play out funny but in my head it's been funny for a couple of days now I've just been saying that and here's the song is called dumb when you want to be and that's what makes me laugh so now you guys know what goes on in my head and I don't share those because I, I know that won't be funny. But it's funny in my head. That is. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. It didn't sound convinced. It reminded me of like this specific Instagram reel from people from this specific person that I've seen a bunch where one guy knows the lyrics and the other guy doesn't. And they go back and forth, but... Not really. Um, are you looking something up or? I was looking at the shorts. Question? No, you can rip a question. All right. This is from K. Dell. K. Dell. Kristen Dell. Um, yeah. Catherine. Kyle uh, Delafini. <laughs> no. Um, they said, do you fell back in love with baseball? Thanks to what you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Been watching some of the old vlogs in the off season. Do you have any favorite vlog moments? or greatest episodes that come to mind that I have to check out? Oh, I have no idea. I'm sure there's moments that I... Watch the first vlog, When You and Jake Build a Shelf. That's funny. Is it? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll link. I'll give Rob the link, and he'll put it in the YouTube description. That's a funny vlog. I don't remember vlogs. I mean, I'm sure if you tell me moments... Yeah. Um. Does does Jake saying uh, like there's probably quotes I remember from blogs, vlogs. Does Jake saying uh, me, I'm cooling, cooling, just being cool. Is that from a vlog? I don't know. I've never heard that. Okay. Do you have any? I don't remember. Um, I mean the whole playlist of the initial twenty six vlogs that were posted to the main channel, those are probably all funny. And correction, it wasn't the first vlog ever where you built the shelf. It was the 24th vlog ever. 
oh, eating okay. plantains and how to build a bookshelf. I will copy this link. That building a bookshelf is funny. I liked when Rizzo got traded because that was very in the moment moment and like truly behind the scenes vlog. But I I don't know like that's they're so small random moments. What about uh, when I'm really high in um, Arizona and I'm asking Jake like all his favorites? Is that a vlog thing or is that just a social media video? I don't remember. When I say like favorite kind of soup <laughs> and stuff. Um. You guys leave them in the comments if you have yes. a moment. If you watch the vlogs and you have a moment that sticks out. Yeah, this is hard to think through. Cause yeah. I don't remember those moments as in the vlog or not because there was just like here. Because that's just like life, life moments. Like I don't know I'm being filmed sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I have a personal favorite, but I'm not going to be able to. F I know it's in a vlog because I went back and watched it again. But uh, Oh, what about the Mike Ford when I, when I screamed? That was technically Zach's vlog footage uh, that went viral, not the stream. Okay, so then that's. I mean, that's probably one of these, right? Watch the crazy Yankees wild card game two. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what series it was? Was it a wild card? No, it was the ALDS. But yeah, I don't remember. You guys are going to have to let us know. Yeah. How many vlogs have there been? 160. Whoa. Cool. All right, good stuff. Yeah, that was good. Next cue, or are we going back to topics? No, but we can do a cue. Um, Landon's goof and gaff, of course. Happy New Year's, fellas. Uh, goof and gaff. If you could only eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Uh, what would be the one that would like keep me alive? What's the best? Is there like a nutritional answer to that? Rice? No. Avocado? I don't know. No, I wouldn't need avocado. You need to be able to fill That's you up. That's a superfood. Um, I don't know. Meat? Chicken? Chicken? That would taste terrible. I don't care. I don't care about food, so I just do whatever is like keeps me alive. I yeah. Don't, I don't really, I'm not a food person. That You I don't, don't need, care about food at all. That's yeah. true. Yeah, I just eat. I don't choose my own lunch. Um, Yeah. Logistically, I think you have to choose chicken for life. Um, I wouldn't want to. That's not fun. I feel like I would just choose a cereal and say, fuck it. I'll have bad health. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. Sorry. Yeah, was that a bad answer? No, I just like, like I like foods and I dislike foods, <clears throat> but I don't. I just eat. Like if you, if like, like sometimes Katie makes dinner that she thinks is bad. She just won't eat it. And I was like, well, whatever. Like, yeah, it stinks, but let's just eat it. Just get the substance and leave. So what? that's how I view food. I've been ripping it on the air fryer lately. Oh, I liked my air fryer when I was cooking. Yeah, I enjoy cooking sometimes. Like, I, there's not like I'll eat anything. There's foods I like and there's foods I dislike, but. Once you enter that range, I don't really care. Um, all right. Can you tell everybody about the deli counter that has been outside and has fallen over more times than you could count? Yeah. So we have company values at uh, John Boy Media that we came up with that, <clears throat> you know, uh, a lot of companies do this stuff and it's really like cringy and corny and annoying. And ours might be. Some employees might really like have the same... Uh, sentiment i've worked at companies where they've tried to do this stuff and i've been like uh corporate blah but um we like workshop them with a team of people that have been here and and there and like what like who are we what do we value what what do we use to make decisions and that we narrowed it down to seven and uh the leadership team has actually been like using them to make decisions and to have conversations so uh then the next step that Courtney, when she did our head at our leadership retreat, she gave us like a book that showed like how other companies like instill these to make sure the employees kind of know them and like know that we want them to act off of them. 
And they were all all those ideas stunk. Remember, it was like stand them up in the middle of the office, and if they can recite them, they get twenty bucks. Remember yeah. that was the book, and, yeah. and, and we all agreed like no way, like this isn't just like a memory military contest, like that's yeah. stupid. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we workshopped an idea and came up with uh, we have seven uh, values and. Um, Every month outside of the elevator, there'd be a little sign with, with one of them up that's for the whole month. And then a deli counter pull machine. And uh, you can pull the tab and um, nominate a, a fellow coworker that exemplified that value and, and why. And at the end of the month, whoever has the most votes from their peers will win um, uh, money, I think, gift card. And... I don't know. I like that because the deli pulling a deli cab counter is fun. So like you want to be on like you, people are going to be like, I want to pull that thing. Who, who's been good mm -hmm. uh, just so they get to pull it, you know, no misfires allowed. And, and then it's not just like the leadership team being like all of us like choosing it's them choosing themselves basically. Yeah. Uh, so that's what we came up with. And if people think it's awful, then they can uh, think that and not do it. But if people, um, want to partake which most of the employees we have here like want enjoy partaking in this stuff and having yeah. fun with it and um we did all agree that it if it was just like a a postcard or like a a note card that you wrote in and submitted it then the idea sucked so it's basically we wanted a deli pull tab thing in our office and now we have it <clears throat> what's the value for this month avoid complacency yes yeah Avoid complacency, and the subtext is enjoy the mountain peak and then go chase the next one, which is I always use the analogy of, like, uh, a race. Yeah, uh, we, all right, we finished that race. We did well. Next one starts right now. I could just – that's the business. Yeah. Um, going off the script, just yeah. because I feel like since we've gotten in this room – Don't let people know this is scripted. The <laughs> – the Stroman rumors have only intensified. That's crazy. Um, you and him have spoken on Twitter before, right? No. No, he called us racist. And then I tried to uh, reach out through, like, mutual friends. And uh, they tried to reach out, and he said he didn't want to talk to us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect that. I, when you were talking, I was looking it up, and you had posted a breakdown about him, and he said you couldn't have been more wrong. Yeah, well, that was, I think that was after the fact. He doesn't like us. Oh. I, he doesn't like anyone. I mean, he does like people. He doesn't like us. I don't really know why. Um, yeah, and we tried to like reach out and like s smooth things over. And be like, hey, man, like what's what's going on? And he just said. It was like, you know, another, another player that we knew that knew him or, or someone. And he just said, like, I'll never talk to them. I was like, oh, okay. So if he's on the Yankees, that's awkward. But whatever. I mean, it doesn't really change us. No. I feel like uh, if they sign him, it's like another Donaldson where the guy was super active on Twitter. And, and then, then he's just, just going to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I wonder. Damn, that's another, like, test. Yeah. Whoa, the boards are at the warehouse. Cool. For the new sport, which you'll learn about tomorrow. They're floorball boards. So there are floorball boards as well, but we're using them for the new sport, which we're filming next week. Um, which, yeah, it looks good. Look, it's going to make the camera angles look so much better. Awesome. Yeah, they look great. And, and it's, gonna, it's, and it's they're going to pop. Those look really good. Yeah. The boards that we've been using, I feel like, off-white. So that looks yeah. awesome. And... It's also exciting because now floorball right up against the wall. Yeah. We're going to make the bend still. A little. So you can wrap the ball around. But but the backs will be right up against the wall. Yeah. Nice. Um, those look good. Yeah. The, the name of the sport gets announced in the video tomorrow, but nothing about what it is. No rules. Yeah. yeah. Um, two quick things before we get out of here. Um. And you, you have Talking Yanks, Talking Baseball today? Talking Baseball. 
Talking baseball. Um, any thoughts on Tiger Woods splitting with Nike? I didn't know it happened. Uh, Did you watch Tiger growing up? No. No golf. Uh, I watched golf in college a lot. When I lived in Australia, there was commercials where all the kids said, uh, I want to be like Tiger. And I thought it was being like an animal. And then I asked my dad, and he said he's a golfer. Um, so, yeah, like Jake's a huge Tiger fan because he grew up in that, like, he's a god. But I I didn't pay attention. Yeah. So I, I would really... wear red on Sundays. So you're a big Tiger fan? Yeah. Sundays I would go to church and uh, hang out with my community. So it's kind of. I didn't say where I was wearing red. Well, at church with my community. Mm. Um, and then just two quick ones on cricket. Uh, OJ Simpson asked if John Boy completely blew up in the cricket world, would you ever release less baseball content? No. I thought that's how you would answer that. I mean, less baseball content. We do so much baseball content. <laughs> um, I mean, I do six podcasts a week on baseball plus breakdowns plus just tweeting about baseball plus like social media. Like I posted, um, 50 something or 44, uh, breakdowns and social, like short social breakdowns during in October in the month. And that did not include being on the live streams and doing, and doing the podcast. So, Sometimes we've set ourselves up for failure because we do so much content that if we, like, take it away, they're like, you don't do anything anymore. I'm like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Like, do you know how much Jake and I do? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if I, like, if I take one breakdown and it's not baseball anymore and then a new sport, people might say he doesn't do baseball anymore. But in the grand scheme of things, it's still 80% of the content I'm doing, which is 20-plus uh, pieces of content a week. And I can't get out of that even if we really wanted to. So yeah. I'm stuck in this rat race. I enjoy it. I'm not complaining. <laughs> I do. I do. Uh, majority of our audience, especially people that listen to the show, like, and why we've been able to like do warehouse and do other ventures is they allow us to do other stuff. It does still, like I've gotten so good at uh, not getting upset with uh, some of the negative stuff because majority of our audience is really nice. Still does bother me sometimes when people are like, he doesn't do this anymore. I'm like, what? Like last season, he doesn't do breakdowns anymore. I'm like, what? What? I did four a week. Yeah. They take five hours to make. Like, what? Um, just because I used to do six a week. But that was before we diversified, which we had to do to survive. So anyway, um, I got to get over that. But yes, we'll still do break uh, baseball stuff. Yeah, I mean, have to. Otherwise, what are we doing? Um, and then, last cricket-related question. Uh, Ryan McFarlane asked, are you actively trying to find creators and build cricket-related shows? No. I don't know if... I don't, I don't know if... Uh, no. I mean, if... I don't... One... Um... <laughs> Companies have different sales teams for like U.S. sales and international sales. So if like we were to build a cricket show and it was to get like 80% views in India or Australia or England, um, that doesn't really help our sales team because their their uh, client that they talk to is probably like leading like um, SeatGeek U.S., not SeatGeek Australia. So you can't just it's like a whole new uh, account basically. Um, I'm not against it, but not right now. I'm not act. I am not, we are never actively searching for a, a specific sport, so to speak. Um, you know, we started JM football, so that might be the only exception. We're like, yeah, we want people to cover football for us and break into that because um, there's such a big audience there. But otherwise that's never how we've thought about adding people. Uh, we never thought about adding a category. We think about adding people that fit, um, what we want our people to be like and whatever they want to cover, go out and prove you can do and get numbers and, and you're good. Yeah. 
But like a, a social, I thought about adding like a like a cricket social account because there's going to be three months in a row with uh, oh all well, ball and play franchise is coming out in May, and that's a spoiler for the release schedule. Now they know one. Yeah. After that, the T20 World Cup is going to be uh, taking place in the U.S. and the uh, West Indies or Caribbean. And then after that, uh, MLC, Major League Cricket. And so there's a thought. I was talking to uh, Emily, who's been on the show from Major League Cricket, about creating her own socials just for, like, that stretch and seeing, like, what happens. But I don't know who would cover them or who would be tweeting and stuff. So I guess that's all my thought on adding cricket and stuff. That would be an interesting account. I enjoy cricket. I watch way more cricket than I tweet about or like do breakdowns on. I don't know if people know that. It's it's like such good uh, hourly entertainment for me because it's not prime time. So the the hours work out perfectly. But I I mean I I genuinely enjoy it. Like someone was like tweeting angrily like why'd you stop doing hockey you did this i'm like man the hockey numbers i didn't like doing some of the hockey breakdowns but actually they were really hard to do because the the footage is uh and the broadcast isn't the easiest to work with but the numbers showed that like none of the hockey community was coming over to watch them we weren't getting new viewers and the returning viewers were like you know not a ton where the returning viewers for cricket's the same but the new viewers is way more and i genuinely enjoy watching cricket Nice. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't want to hold up talking baseball at all. So that might be a meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned. Okay. Well, thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you later. Next time. I didn't play any music. The whole show's wasted. Fuck. I didn't do any songs. I didn't do any songs. We didn't even do anything. Oh, my God. Thanks for all your comments. See you later, guys.